The stoic dwarves of Ironforge spent countless generations mining treasures from deep within the earth. Hidden within their impregnable stronghold of Ironforge Mountain, they rarely ventured beyond the wintry peaks of Dunmora. Recently, however, the dwarves unearthed a series of ruins that held secrets to their ancient heritage. Driven to discover the truth about his people's fabled origins, the great king Magni Bronzebeard ordered that the dwarves shift their industry from mining to archaeology. As part of the Grand Alliance, the stalwart dwarven armies have been called away to battle the merciless horde in faraway lands. In these perilous times, the defense of the mountain kingdom falls to brave dwarves like you. The spirits of the ancient kings watch over you, and the very mountains are your strength. The future of your people is in your hands. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of World of Warcraft Classic. Robert Rambles here and thank you so much for joining me today. Joining me in Cold Ridge Valley as we check out a starting, well, level 2 dwarf rogue. So this is the rogue class in Classic. We're starting off with Sinister Strike and Eviscerate. And so Sinister Strike is an instant strike that causes 3 damage in addition to your normal weapon damage and awards 1 combo point. So we can stack up to 5 combo points on an enemy and then we can use our finisher Eviscerate. Finishing move that causes damage per combo point increased by attack power. So as you can see, depending on the number of combo points that we have stacked on a target, we're going to deal more damage. This is going to be a melee class. We're starting off with 1 dagger. And we have throwing weapons. We have a ranged ability to throw. Right now we have axes, but we can get knives and other things that we can throw from a distance to pull targets. Or just deal some additional damage as they run at us. Uh, we wear leather gear on the rogue. And when we get into stats, we'll be looking for stamina and agility. And we're checking out a new zone today. The starting zone for the dwarves. Here starting off in Cold Ridge Valley and then opening up into the greater part of Dunmoreau. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see a different area today that really reflects the world outside my window right now. Uh, today is January 17th and there's ice and snow here in Kansas City, Missouri. Hi. Dwarven Outfitters. What do we have here? You look as though you might need something to keep your hands warm. I'll tell you what would help. A pair of nice warm gloves. And, being the kind soul that I am, I'd be more than happy to provide you with a suitable pair. I have one condition, however. I need you to get me some wolf meat. Nice arrangement, hmm? You bring me some wolf meat, and I'll make sure you won't lose any digits to frostbite. Well, what do you say? Eight pieces of tough wolf meat. I did, as you can see, I'm level two. I went around and toyed with the abilities a little bit, set up my UI, and we got to level 2. I found some trash gloves, but uh, these look like they might be... Well, you know what? The ones that I found, humorously, the ragged leather gloves that I currently have equipped have 17 armor. Um, oh, these have 21. We were looking at the cloth. Okay, so that will be an upgrade. Let's go kill some wolves and get into things. Playing on the rogue, I kind of realized that I, I do like being in melee range with the enemies. It's something that I really enjoyed on the warrior as well. Uh, just getting up close and personal and really being able to see the enemy models and animations. And I'm just like sticking to the fact that you don't get the same experience when you are fighting things at range. It's, it's different. You don't get to appreciate as much of the art that goes into the, the enemy models when you're nuking stuff as a mage and the goal as a mage is to basically not let it even get close to you so if you're doing really good you're, you're never going to see those fine details. You can see the combo points the combo points are going to be stacking on the character portrait of the enemy. Ooh, these are trogs, we don't need them yet. And the more combo points we stack, the more damage Eviscerate is going to do. And on the Rogue, we're working with an energy meter. So on the Warrior, we had Rage. We had to get hit or deal damage to build Rage. And on the Mage, we have Mana. 
But on the rogue, we have energy, which regenerates on its own rather quickly. But you can see that all of our abilities are going to use energy, so it's constantly balancing having enough energy to do what we want to do. Like, we could stack one, two combo points, and then if we wait one minute, we can hit Eviscerate. And so for these weaker enemies, one, two, and then Eviscerate is a pretty good way to take care of them if we're a little patient. We missed that one, but we got the combo point. And that's a pretty easy way, one, one, two, right now. Eventually, we're going to get stealth, and I think having a stealth character is going to be very interesting. I've never really played any kind of stealth character in any RPG. It's something that's always intrigued me, but something I never thought I'd be very good at. But this is World of Warcraft Classic, so let's face it, it's going to be fine. And it's probably going to be pretty interesting for me, so I'm excited to check it out a little bit. I find it interesting that this is like the beginning level quest, but it's not a 100% drop rate, is it? There's our throw ability. Sorry for that. Probably was unnecessary, we could have just done that. But we have to trigger it every time, it's not gonna automatically throw it, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not an auto attack. And, it, and it's not very fast. It does have a two second cooldown. So it's not just, yeah. So we have to kind of, you get to use it once. We can get two off, I think. And then we're, and then we're gonna be throwing out our Sinister Strike. But that's pretty good additional damage. The only thing is that it is a consumable. So we're gonna have to make sure that if we want to use these for additional damage that we're, we're buying more of them. And you can see they also have DPS attributed with them, so we're going to have to buy better and better throwing weapons as we level up if we want the damage to matter. Unless we just want to use it to pull. If we're just using it to pull, then it doesn't matter how much damage it does. But you can see we can get a significant amount of damage off of them pretty much right away with the- th Oh, look at that! That is good luck, guys. Getting a green pouch on your first quest? Yeah. I like it. That's just good luck. That's always been a sign of good luck for me on a, on a character. If we get an extra bag early, that's huge. It's huge. Because as you can see, uh, bag space fills up rather quickly and you need to loot and sell everything from the get-go to make enough gold in this game. Because it is not easy. We're just going to sell everything right now that we don't need, and we don't need much. How are ya? Ah, wonderful. The wolf meat should do nicely. Oh, don't worry. I wouldn't forget my part of the bargain. Here, one of these should fit you. We'll take the wolf handler gloves. Obviously. Ah, uh, two new quests, encrypted rune. While you were helping me out, this rune was giving, given to me to pass on to you. Take some time to read it when you have a chance. I'm thinking it came from the rogue trainer, Solm. Take a gander at it and go find him inside Anvilmar when you've a chance. Read the encrypted rune from our class trainer. And then Cold Ridge Valley mail delivery, so a breadcrumb out of here probably. Hmm, I don't suppose you'd be willing to do me a favor. A stack of letters came through the past today, but I don't have time to send them along. They're all addressed to Talon Kenai. You can find him west on the road. He set up camp next to the frozen lake. What do you say? Deliver the stack of letters to Talon Kenai. Yes, okay. So not out of Cold Ridge, but a little ways down the road. Uh, Balir Frosthammer has a quest. A new threat. I hope you're here to lend us a hand, rogue. After the last trog attack, we could use all the help we can get. I hear the buggers have been popping up all across the lands. And it seems Cold Ridge Valley is no exception. You've been spotted all over the hills. Or they've been spotted all over the hills to the southeast and near the frozen lake. And that's not all. 
Just a few nights ago, they attacked and overran our camp to the west. We're a bit short-handed here, and we need strong arms to help drive the trogs back. Beller Frosthammer wants you to kill six Rockjaw Trogs and six Burly Rockjaw Trogs. Alright, what do we get? Um, we get a cloak. That's fine. We, we saw the Trogs, they're basically directly south of here. I think we need to run up into the building here and find our class trainer, however. Should maybe be the first thing we do. And I should drink some coffee so I can read properly. I've said it before when we've encountered Dwarven buildings in other playthroughs, but I love the Dwarven architecture, and it never occurred to me as a six foot four man how much I had in common with, with dwarves, because I just love their buildings. Um, if I could choose a, a structure to live in, it would probably be a Dwarven bunker such as this. Something soundproof and made out of solid stone under the earth. Um, yeah, I dig it a lot. All right, our trainer is over here. Solm Hargren. He looks sufficiently badass. You made it. Great. We've got an influx of activity lately, so I'm glad to count another of the Ironforge clan among our numbers. Nothing like a cold blade in your hand and a shadow to keep you one step ahead. And if you're here, you know exactly what I mean. Um, I don't know what you mean, <laughs> but let's read the rune before we get rid of it. I hope this rune finds you well. I wanted to take a moment to let you know that I'm inside Amalmar above Colbridge Valley. I know how important it is we all stick together, and in this time of strained peace, it's becoming even more important to have our kind around. Look for me when you have time. Okay, we should have read that first, but I did want to read it before we lost it forever. And if you haven't seen the other playthroughs, I, I am into reading like any books we come across or letters that I'll read as infrequent as they are. And, and I probably miss a bunch of stuff, but I, I am in, more into the lore than anything else. So I'll, I'll be reading everything. I encrypted rune. Anyway, as you start peeking around Coldridge, you'll probably have need of training at some point. You just come back to me whenever you feel the need, and I'll teach you what I know. A trick here, a maneuver there. You know, the stuff that keeps you alive and making a little extra coin. Keep an eye out on our gnomish friends too. They kind of got the short end of the stick with that gnomergon being destroyed. They'll need our help to feel welcome. Yeah, so the gnome city was just destroyed where we're at in the timeline and the gnomes have sought refuge with the dwarfs because they're both short? Something like that. You guys correct me. There's a good reason for it. Um, hi. What is this? I swear this guy just ran up. I thought he was following us for a minute. That was kind of weird. Uh, let's equip our wolf. They look exactly the same, I think. Yes, they have the same graphic. Interesting. Alright, and we didn't really check him out to see if he had any new abilities. We just kind of turned in the quest. Yeah, see, we can learn stealth. Let's learn stealth. And furthermore, we need to keybind stealth. So... There we go. And then we're going to need to have, like, some abilities on our stealth bar. We might be able to open with that from stealth for now. And so we'll have two different action bars. We're going to have to manage a stealth action bar and a non-stealth action bar. Uh, but there's only going to be a few abilities that we are going to use from stealth, I think. Like I said, not very familiar with the rogues, so I will be learning some as I go. If you guys have any suggestions, uh, yeah, feel free to let me know. Uh, for now, let's like head down to the trogs, I think. We have the mail delivery, which is, I believe they said, to the, to the west. But we know the trogs are right down here. And that seems exciting, so let's go do that. Really nasty looking. Look at the, look at the boils all over it. Oh, 
jeez. All right. Not really a good point to stealth right now because these are all non-aggressive. But, you know, this is how slow we are in stealth. In retail World of Warcraft, your speed in stealth is the same as it is when you're not stealthed. So in retail, they don't punish you at all for being in stealth. Your movement speed is the same. Probably faster with some talents and abilities. Uh, but back in Classic, when you stealth, you were stealthing. You were creeping along like when you hit... Um, you know, when you hit crouch in like an action RPG and you, and you actually creep along, like that's what you did. And then it changed to make the game easier. I'm not sure. I'm not really sure why it changed. You know, why do we run at normal speed now in Retail World of Warcraft when we're a rogue? Why, why don't we have to creep along? Is it just that we got so good at being a rogue? And that would kind of make sense. Like imagine like a ninja like, running really fast, but still being really silent and stealthy. I could buy that, I guess. It would be cool if it just unlocked at a certain point. I'm, like, worrying about fighting these guys as if they're going to social aggro. That's why I've been hesitating, so... Turn our V-bars on, so we can see what's going on. And, yeah, the interesting thing is, when they're not aggressive like this, they're not going to social aggro. <laughs> Yeah, we really need to stack at least two combo points before Eviscerate is very effective. Hey, there's level three. It's useful when you start a new character just to go out and immediately grind up to level two like I did. I just went around and used my abilities to kill like seven or eight monsters. And that got level two before we even took the first quest. I feel like it's always kind of worth it to do that. It gives you just that little bit of an edge right in the beginning. Ooh, it gives you a little bit of an edge right in the beginning, and yeah, it's easy to do. I need to find the, just the, yeah, the regular rock jaw trogs. I guess we've been fighting just the burly ones. You'd think they'd be like interspersed. Burly. The, the rock jaw ones, the normal guys are actually further away uh, from us. Oh, and look, we found another quest. Uh, let's take it, just in case it has anything to do with these trogs. Grelin Whitebeard. What can I do for you? My brother Senor and I were sent to different parts of Dunmoreau to investigate the threat posed by the trolls. The Senate has its hands full with the trogs, and so they've seen, so they've no need for further annoyances. From what I've seen, the trolls aren't well suited here in Coldridge Valley. Mostly the southern cave. I'd say that the army will not be necessary. A few strong arms should be more than enough. Perhaps you'd like to assist in this endeavor. I have the authority to offer compensation for your help. Girl and Whitebeard would like you to kill 14 Frostmane troll whelps. Ooh, we get a new dagger with almost double the damage. So this area is dealing with a trog invasion and a troll invasion. That's a lot of stuff going on, like, in a starting zone, you know? Unfortunately, in Classic, I feel like the most coherent stories are told in the starting zones. I say unfortunate because I would really prefer a strong narrative arc in every zone. It just isn't always what you get. And when you do get it, you can't even really do play consistently through it just because you have to level in other zones. We're just seeing a lot of burly ones. Where are these, um... Where are these other guys? Are they further? Are they further to the south? I mean, let's check over here. Burly. Burly. Burly, burly. They're all burly, guys. Makes a little sense. We killed one <laughs> rock jaw trog somewhere. You guys probably know exactly where they're at and you're laughing at me. And that's totally cool. There's one over here. See, they're just kind of... Maybe it's like the weaker ones don't make it very far, and so only the burly ones are out this way. That would make sense, I guess. If we're trying to find a reason for it.
Well, we, we have Cold Ridge mail delivery right over here. We might as well run over here and turn this breadcrumb in and see what that's about while we wander around aimlessly looking for these normal rock jaw guys. Look, there's one up ahead. Maybe they're just all over the place and meant to drive us to explore a little bit. Talon Kenai is here. You got my attention. Yes, we do have something for you. A stack of letters. Thank you. I've been waiting for these letters for quite some time. Unfortunately, these letters aren't all for me. This one is addressed to Grelin Whitebeard. He's not too far away if you'd like to deliver. Yeah, we met Grelin. <laughs> if I remember correctly, Grelin's camp is down the road to the southeast. Yes. Yes, it is. What else do you have? The boar hunter. Nothing like a day of boar hunting, huh? Though here in Coldridge Valley, there are so many boars, it almost takes the fun out of it. No need to get them charging. They're all angry and ready without any help. In fact, recently, there have been so many boars in the area, it's becoming dangerous for me to do my daily hunting. Long story short, if you could help me kill some of the boars, I would appreciate it. Kill 12 boars, get some pants. I wonder if they're going to be made out of boars. Now we have to run back to uh, Whitebeard and just turn in this breadcrumb, but we did see a non-burly trog. And we're taking this little, if I can get little guy out. I feel almost bad for him because somehow he's even shorter than us. It's totally fine. He asks for it. Uh, what did we get? 31 armor as a, compared to what? As compared to no armor at all, guys. We are just wearing a shirt, apparently. There we go. Uh, now we have actual armor on of some kind. Which is always good. Thought I saw a trog. No, I saw some boars. We need these boars anyway, so let's take them out. And you can kind of, you kind of have to get a cadence for how fast your energy refills. You know, rogue's energy, yeah, it doesn't really tell you the rate at which it re-energizes, but it's easy to figure out. It's like every two seconds, you know, it refills like 20. I'm sure there's an exact number I could easily find. Um, more burly ones. Wonderful. Eventually we will be able to dual wield, so we'll be able to have a weapon in each hand. We'll, we'll be able to use swords and axes, and I think maces, as well as daggers, depending on the spec we go. I think that certain specs um, use different weapon loadouts on the rogue. If I remember correctly. We should probably think about equipping some of these boots that we have. Because right now, uh, what we have on is basically nothing. Same thing with these bracers. We're not wearing any bracers, so we might as well equip those even though they're a gray item. It's, it's worth it to equip them just for the armor. Especially when you're a melee class and you know, you, you know you're going to be getting hit. Should probably try to start building up to three combo points and then eviscerating for the 16 to 20 damage. See how that goes. Now that the fights are lasting a little bit longer. Same thing with this cloak. We might as well put it on. He's definitely right about the overpopulation of the boars. I mean, there are about 1 million boars out here. Um, thinking about professions, if I were to play this character in the future, if you're thinking about a rogue, you know, and you wanted to make your own gear, leather working and skinning would be great. Oh, 
I guess it would also be interesting. You, you could do kind of what we did on the warrior and on the rogue. You could take herbalism and alchemy, and that way you can make yourself like healing potions and and, and buffs later on if you were going to dedicate yourself to actually leveling up leveling up your alchemy. Oh, that was, a, that was a good crit. Which makes our eviscerate kind of useless in that case. Uh, we are going to have a lot of junk. Like I said, it's it's good that we got this extra bag. It makes me feel really confident in just being able to be out here looting everything without having to, to run back. Oh, and we need to be looking out still for these normal trogs. Like this guy hiding in here. Just among the burly ones. Oh, wrong, no, wrong guy. <laughs> like, what, did an auto attack go off on accident? Sorry. Alright, no, we meant to attack your little brother. So sad. Stabbing baby trogs in the face. They're, they're probably not babies. I mean, they look old as dirt, but it's hard to tell with trogs. And then we have this breadcrumb to turn into Whitebeard um, that we got from the other guy we stumbled into. And then this Nori Pride Drift, he has a quest for us that will be available in a couple levels, so we'll have to remember that if nothing sends us back here. I don't want to miss out on easy experience. What's on your mind? Uh, let's see, that was the mail delivery. It's been a while since I received word from Iron Forge. Well, there you go. And there's level four, so hey, we're hey, look at that. And then this opened up, not bad. What can I do for ya? Scalding Morn Brew delivery. This must be the quest that takes us out of Cold Ridge when we're ready to leave. Gah! I was supposed to get this delicious Scalding Morn Brew to Durnan Fur Cutter inside Anvilmar a while ago. And for now, oh no, it takes us back to Anvilmar. But I had to deliver one to Grelin here first. I'll never make it to Anvilmar before the brew runs cold. You look fast. Maybe you can make it. This cup will only stay hot for five more minutes. And Durnan didn't order chili morn brew, so get going. Anvilmar is to the northeast. We know where Anvilmar is, and I think an arrow would tell us if we didn't. Alright, we have a timed quest. So right out of the gate, you know, we're level four. Just started playing, potentially, World of Warcraft. 14 years ago, 15 years ago. And then you have a timed quest. We gotta get our asses back in five minutes. Which is relatively easy, because we don't actually have to stop to fight anything because everything is not aggressive so there's not really a lot of pressure here unless you like actually can't read your map at all I guess but you know if you were much younger back in 2004 uh, you might have felt some pressure by this suddenly timed quest so I think that's very interesting I doubt you'll find that at level 4 today in retail in fact I know that you probably won't but here it is let's head back here we probably could have uh, killed some more guys on the way back, but it's fine. Let's see if this chains into anything. Ah, and uh, Felix here has a quest for us. We'll grab on the way back up. Yeah, I love the, I love the architecture. It's really my favorite. I feel like I should have been playing dwarfs like the whole time I've been playing World of Warcraft, and I just have been missing out the whole time. You got my attention. Hi, I'm Durnan Fur Cutter. You have something for me? Yeah, we have this semi-hot morning brew. Lukewarm, maybe. Ah, good. Now this will hit the spot. Allow me to take a small break while I enjoy this scalding morn brew. Hey, that's that sounds awesome, man. A morning brew? Yes, please. 
Alright, bring back the mug. Now that hit the spot. Nothing like a piping hot, nay, scalding morn brew on a cold winter's day to warm your cackles. Warm your cackles of your soul. Okay. Here you go. Be a pal and take this empty mug back to Noral for me. Yeah, we can do that. We're good at running around. Even though we have kind of short legs, we have a hella endurance. I love the music that's going on right now. Very over the top. Uh, let's check our trainer. Hey, look at that. Backstab, which we can use from stealth. Backstab the target, causing 150% weapon damage plus 15 more damage to the target. Must be behind the target. Requires a dagger in the main hand. So some of these, you can see, are going to be specific. We need a dagger in our main hand to do this ability. And so we are going to do 150% of our weapon damage. And so, yeah, you can see our DPS. If our damage is 2, uh, we're going to do, let's say, you know, 3 to 4 damage maybe. And then we're going to do 15 more damage to the target. So we're going to get that. Pickpocket could be fun to make some extra coin, but we don't have the silver to train it right now. We need to sell some stuff. Sell everything we don't need here. Which should be basically everything. There we go. And let's go ahead and if we go to our stealth bar, we could put this on our stealth bar. We can open with backstab. And, you know, we don't have to be in stealth to use this, I don't think, but we have to be behind the target. So if the target is aggressive, the only way we're going to get behind it is from stealth. Uh, for now, some mobs are not aggressive, so we'll be able to get to them, you know, we'll be able just to walk around them basically and backstab them. But that won't last very long. Hi, you're a tall one. Uh, well, I guess we are. A refugee's quandary. We drove the trogs out of Nomergon. But then it all went so horribly wrong. Now our home is completely irradiated, and we gnomes have been scattered all over Dunmoreau. In my haste to get away from the radiation, I lost all my personal belongings and tools. It was the trolls that got them. They stole my chest, my box, and my bucket of bolts. They took them back to their camp southwest of Anvilmar. I'm no adventurer. Could you find my things and bring them here to me, please? I'll bring Felix's box, chest, and bucket of bolts back to Anvilmar. Yeah, so he's one of the gnomes that, you know, they said Nomergon was irradiated. Basically, Nomergon, their main city, got invaded by trogs. And the leader decided to basically spill some, like, gas or irradiated gas to, to fill the city, which killed the trogs, but then forced the gnomes to have to leave their city. It was inhabit uninhabitable after that. And so he's one of the refugees. We still need a rock jaw trog, guys. We've gotten very distracted, but I feel like that's okay. But now we can set back out. We have a crap ton of things to do, and we should be tracking them. Keep them in mind. Now we know the little ones like to hide amongst the big ones. But I'm not seeing any right here. And we do need some boars. So look at these. There's a two of them here. Weirdly stacked right within each other. Very strange. Very, very unusual behavior. Oh, I, I could have showed you backstab there. That would have been a good idea. We'll check it out on the last boar we need over here. And so if this were an aggressive monster, we'd like, we'd stealth in. We probably could have waited to hit it. We'd come behind him. Open with backstab. Deal a crap ton of damage. Throw out a sinister strike. And, you know, that's it. They're done. So that's going to be fun. Stealthing in, getting behind guys and either stunning them or doing a lot of damage up front. We're going to get a couple more abilities we can use from stealth. I want to learn pickpocket, because if we use pickpocket on humanoids, we can steal some coin, I think. Maybe items, even. That might be something we need to play around with to get some additional money.
This must be the crag borer turning. What's on your mind? Oh no, this was the mug. We're returning the mug. Excellent. You'd be surprised how many couriers I meet to forget to do something as simple as bring back the mug. Mugs don't grow on trees, or so they tell me. Alright, that was easy experience. We do need to find the trolls, which... Oh, the trolls are over here. I see one in the distance. Yeah, we need those guys. I'd really love to find this last, um, regular trog. I, I don't know. At this point, that's, like, apparently asking a lot, but... I think it has to be the priority at the moment. And then we can hit up some of these whelps. They're all the way over this way. So many burly trogs, man. Ooh, a frozen lake. Very cool. I love the winter aesthetic here. I get to appreciate the beauty of it without actually feeling cold myself. <laughs> so, that's a thing. Alright, well what do you have? Well, you're, you have the turn-in for the boars. We need the leather... Leather pants, please. Let's get those equipped. They might they look a little warmer. Now we, we kind of match again. Interesting, we had a color change basically from black to brown. Still no luck finding a uh, regular regular old um, rock jaw trogs. Elusive as ever. Mm, there we go. There's our last one. And so this poor guy, see that he's he's not aggressive. We don't have to be in stealth. We just get behind him. Oh, look at that. Enormous 48 crit, guys. That's the ticket. That's the ticket. I like it. All right, um, now we can head down here to these trolls and maybe we can make short work of them. We also have to be scouting all over for Felix's stuff while we're down here. It's probably going to be spread all along the southern the southern area of Cold Ridge here. So we'll keep our eyes out and hover over anything that looks like we can pick it up. A box, a chest, and a bucket of bolts is what we're looking for. And these trolls, um, they are aggressive. And so we're gonna go in, we're gonna go in stealth here. And if we get too close to the front of them, they will detect us. See how he turned? They have a stealth detection radius. But that works out pretty well. Uh, but stealth also has a cooldown on it, as you can see. And now it's back up. There's the box right there. It's much better when uh, backstab crits. I hope they don't run. Um, this is gonna get dicey. Maybe we take this guy out over here first. I have a bad feeling that they're all going to want to pull together. Oh, they, they didn't. I think we got really lucky with that. I don't know that we can even get in here without him seeing us. Oh, well, look at that. Yep, I'm definitely digging the ability to sneak around like that. That is very nice. Very nice. Sleep. Alright, here's the box. It's one item down out of three. I don't think they're going to put any of the other items over here. I'm thinking that most of the items are probably going to be by structures or maybe inside of like a cave. 
I want to be fighting more by the buildings. And less out here in the middle of nowhere, because if there's an item inside the camps, we're going to have to clear into it. And we only need 14 of these guys, really. This is going to get tricky. What's in here? Anything we need? Oh yeah, his chest is right here. Wonderful. How in the hell? How in the hell are we going to do this? Alright. Um. Hmm. This is intimidating. How the heck do they expect us to pull this without... We're going to pull at least two of them, I think. Well, let's see if we can survive it. We look like we're doing okay. Alright, apparently we can take on two of them at this level, no, no problem. Uh, that was interesting. Now we know a little bit more of what we're capable of and I'm feeling very good about it. Oh, we didn't pull the guy inside because I moved away? Oh, that's nice. This has been real nice. Alright, um... We, d we could probably... We'll probably click this right in front of this guy. We don't even need him. Alright, that's the chest. And then we need a bucket of bolts. Ooh, there's a battered chest over here, though. Oh, and on the rogue, we're going to get the ability to lockpick. So when we come across those locked chests, if we keep our lockpicking skill leveled up, uh, we'll be able to do that. I'm thinking we head to the last little bit of structures over here, and that should be all that we need. The bucket should be over there somewhere. Ooh, he detected something. See how he stops and looks? Stealthing, it, it kind of adds like an interesting layer to gameplay, making it a little bit more immersive than just running up and slapping them in the face. Which is what you're going to do on the other melee classes, basically. Maybe we'd eventually do that on this character too, depending on how we built it, I'm not sure. There's the bucket. Let's take this guy out. Alright, we'll grab our bucket. We'll defeat two more of these guys and then I think we can hearth. Maybe. We can hearth and turn in some of them, but we might as well just run back. I think one of them turns in at one of the camps. I love that this guy just kind of looks like he watched me defeat that guy, just stood there, did nothing. <laughs> Alright, that's 14. Let's start working our way back here. And everything is complete, which is awesome. We're definitely going to hit level 5 here when we turn one of these in. And we're going to get a new dagger, which is excellent. Arg, those light-blasted trolls. Takes a few deep breaths and seems to settle down a bit. 
A group of them came in the night and stole my general. I knew better than to trust that good for nothing. A what was he going to say? Hmm. Apprentice? It's good for nothing, apprentice? Healing herbs. The stolen journal. My journal. They took it away to the cave. The one that had it. It was a big brute with some odd markings on his skin and face. I didn't get a much better look than that. You've had some luck with the trolls. Maybe you could go get it back for me. Oh, uh, we could try, yeah, for sure. Nothing useful from your quest, but we'll do it at some point. And maybe now we can just hearth back, because I think we're going to turn these in and then take a break. So let's just go ahead and use our hearth. If the problems we've had here are indicative of what's happening elsewhere in our lands, by Magni's beard, we have some troubles ahead of us. Can only hope that the King and Senate are taking steps to deal with the threat the Trogs pose. Let's grab this bear shawl. Go ahead and equip that. And then we have one more quest to turn into Felix here because we found all of his stuff for him, so... Let's go do that. Unfortunately, I don't think this building offers rested experience, so it's kind of sad it doesn't act like an inn. It looks like it could. Nice, cozy fire. Alright, Felix. Hi, how are you? Oh, goodness. This town is not well suited for the likes of me. There are as many nasty creatures here as there were in Nomergon before the accident. Well, you know, com beggars can't be choosers, man. Huzzah, you found them. You're an absolute savior, my friend. Here, it's not much, but it's something to, for the trouble. Okay, 50 coin. Alright, yeah, the rogue is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. It's awesome. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, I really appreciate the support. It means a lot to me. Take care, and we'll see you again soon.